Hello, this is Isaac, and this is part two of building a registration system of React Native. In the previous part, I showed you the finished app and the backend stack. In this part, I will show you how to register a user to the database. So the first thing you'll need is React Native installed in your machine. I already have it. Just follow the simple guideline. You will probably need Homebrew so you can install Node.js and Watchman, the React Native CLI globally. You might need to run the sudo command and just start a new project. On the link below, you'll have the full source code. So just extract what you need so you can follow along. I've also deployed my project to Heroku. So you can see live that it's working. Okay, so let's begin. So the first thing is the index.ios file that we get it out of the box once we generate a new project. As you can see, it's registering itself because this file is gonna serve as like the wrapper of all the other components. It's like it's all, all the app is gonna go through this file, basically. That's why, that, that's why this is the only one that we're going to register. And here I'm importing the register component, which I already created. So just create a register.js file. And this is how you call it. Basic stuff, it should be familiar to you. And I will have some styling, so, but I won't go over them. All right, because there are plenty of resources for it. And this is the register component, so I'm exporting it. Again, these are the styling, just copy it from the source code. And, oh, I will need to delete this. I will show you this later. Uh, okay, and this is the code. The part two, registering a user. This is what you see. And by the way, if you click Command D, then disable live reload and disable Chrome debugging. Well, you need to enable them. Okay, and so in this component, this is this is the only file that we're going to use this part. So we will have the state, which will hold the user's data so we can send it to the API and request a registration. And if there's a problem, then we will get it back and we will store it in the errors array. Unless this is in a server error, which in this case, we have a problem in our whole app and we, we really can't do anything about that. So let's hope that's not gonna happen to us. But if it's just something like a name is invalid, email is invalid, so we will all store it in this errors array. So we will need a registration form, of course. Uh, in, so React Native is using native components, iOS components. So I can't just go do form tag like this, like if you use React on the web, it's simply not gonna work. So I'm gonna use text input and every component that you use, you need to import it. So here it is. I already imported it for us. And touchable hot is the button, so we will also gonna use this one. So let's begin. Okay. So we're gonna have some styling for this. Styles.input. And we're gonna have a placeholder. This is gonna be an email. And I'm going to add a callback handler. So whenever the text will change, then this callback will be called and the change text will be passed to it as, uh, as the argument. So we wanna catch this argument. So we're gonna set the parameter to be called val. And we're gonna use the arrow function. And we're just gonna do one thing. We're gonna set the state. In this case, we're gonna set the state of the email because this is the email input. So it makes sense. And just for the sake of it, let's, let's take a look. Let's see if it's working. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna print to the screen the email. So while the user will type, it should show the correct email. Let's take a look. So we're missing something here. Let's see, so we have the text input. We have unchanged text, we have the style, styles.input. This should work, we have the placeholder. This.state.email. Okay, so we made a little mistake. This is good. It's not gonna work, I have to include it inside the view. The view is like the div. It needs to be in the return, parentheses. Now it's gonna work. So email, at email, and as you can see, it's working. So React Native is perfectly managing our state. 
when things will become more complex, you might need to bring in some kind of a flux implementation, maybe Redux perhaps, it's very popular right now. Okay, so now that we have this, I just prepare some snippets because I don't want to waste too much time on typing. I'd rather explain myself than type. So I just added three more text inputs. Let's take a look quickly. So we're going to have an email, we're going to have a name, a password, and a password confirmation. The only difference is in the password, you see the text is more secured, right? And the way to do it is just add this line, secure text entry, and set it to true. It's except a Boolean. You can guess what will happen if you will set it to false. So this is the only thing for the form itself, but of course we will need the button, which will be the touchable highlight. Again, this is another component. We won't be needing this anymore. All right, so we have here a style and we have an event listener on press. So whenever the user hits submit, it will call this method on register pressed, which we will need to write it down right now. So let's do this. Now there's a little thing here that I want, that I want to focus on because I see many tutorials that the only thing they do, okay, you need to bind this because React doesn't do auto binding in ES6. Well, to me, it's a little bit shallow, so I will focus on that. So what's gonna happen here? First, let's see if I'm not gonna add the bind this, what's gonna happen, right? Nothing's gonna happen. We won't have any error at the moment, but let's, let's console.log this all right and this is our console let's clean it up register okay did you see this this is the this context every this the this keyword has a context right it can be a global context it can be a context inside of a function in this case the context is the button this is why we have the on press method available to us right so i can do something like this on press and let's click register. And it's showing us the content of the this on press because it's need to invoke this method, the method that we are actually in right now. So this is not good for us. And the reason is because that context doesn't include the state of the component, right? And the way to prove it to you, if I click register right now, I'm gonna get an, an error. Name is undefined. Of course, name is undefined because name is not defined in the context of the button. It's defined in the context of this whole component, the register component. So if I will still, let's log into this, but in this time we're gonna bind. Bind basically sets the context of the this keyword. In this case, we are sending it to this because right here, the this keyword's context is the whole, the whole component, the whole register. And you'll see it right now. Let's clean this again, click register. And okay, this is the context. You see the register is the context. So when the register is the context, we have access to its state. And if we have another method here, then we will have access to that also. So this is why we must do it. In ES5, if you used ES, ES5 and React on the web, you really didn't have to do it because React itself would automatically do the auto binding for you. So it's like kind of a behind the scene with some magic method. but. Here we must do it, okay? So I just wanted to clear it out. If you're st still a little bit confused about it, just leave a comment below and I'll help you. So now that we have this behind, well, we need to connect to the API, right? So we need to go hello API. We have some data. Uh, tell me if it's okay, it's not okay, but either way, I need to come back to the user with a response. Okay, so uh, React Native has a networking API. It's called Fetch. It's, it's similar to jQuery Ajax, basically, but there are minor differences. Like in jQuery Ajax, it returns back a callback. Fetch returns back a promise, which is like the ES6 way. ES6, ES7, maybe ES8 when it will come. And there's only one more thing that Fetch is, doesn't throw the errors. You will be able to get the errors by yourself, but Fetch won't throw them like jQuery Ajax. So it's our responsibility to throw the errors to the catch method. Now there's two ways to tackle this, this method. We have we can use the ES6 way with the with the then 
catch syntax or the ES7 with the async await syntax. I will use the ES7 way because I think it's more clear in the eyes. So it's like the asynchronous function and we're gonna use the keyword await that's basically it's waiting for the promise to resolve. So what we will need to do, we will need to prefix this method name with async and we will have to try and then catch. And for the catch, well, we will need to add some errors right here. All right. And I prepared also some snippets for this one. I just, you know, I timed it out. If I type it all, it will take much longer. So I see no point, no, no point. Okay, so this is the first step, right? So uh, we're here we have the variable response. And again, we need to wait for the promise to resolve. So we're hitting the API. This is just the route of my Rails project. And the method is post. We're letting it know that this is a JSON object and we need to make it a JSON object. This is why we're doing json.stringify. Now, this user is just a requirement again for my Rails project because this request will hit the user controller and Rails would go and look for the data in the user object. Your backend might do something else, okay? So don't get confused by that. So now we need to catch the response, right? So let's declare another variable and again, await because this is another promise and we want to get the text of the response. Now this text will hold either the error or the success. So this is good, it will make our life easier. Well, let's do something like response is. And let's type here the response. Uh, okay, we should be set to go, ready to go. Clean this. Errors are not good. Line 23, unexpected token. So what do we have at line 23? Oh. It's a typo. Sorry for that. And let's reload this, reload. So line 41, yes, equal. Okay, let's make sure this is the console. Okay, so let's register an empty form. And okay, it's working. So this is the response we've been waiting for because this is the errors, right? So we can tell the user, hey, uh, your name can be blank, your email can be blank, and it's also invalid because email cannot be blank. One of the reasons it's, it's invalid and password can be blank. So this is good for us, right? So now we need to separate success and failure. Oh, by the way, if we fail, let's see if it's gonna succeed, right? So let's put Johnny. Johnny at Johnny.com. Johnny Cage, and eh, never mind. One, two, three, four, five, six. I hope you remember him. This is from Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat. So let's register. And let's take a look at our website. Currently it's empty. Let's refresh. And here it is, Johnny Cage, Johnny at Johnny.com. And this is the access token. So we have WLV. Let's take a look at the response. The response is WLV. So if you remembered in the last part, I showed you that how we are verifying the token so to make sure that the user is logged in. So basically this is how we are doing that, right? So we're, log we're registering and we're getting back the token. So this is working. We are registering the user. So not now all we have left to do is to separate success and failure. So by the status, we can tell that, right? So if it's bigger or equal than 200, and less, less, uh, first of all, I need to type this again, response.status is less than 300, then this is gonna be a success, right? So we can just take this, paste it here, and we can do something like response success is, and the response else. So we're gonna have to set an errors variable to be equal again to the same response because it's because as you can see it's holding both the error or the success it doesn't matter and the last thing we have to do is to throw the errors all right let's put this back here let's 
tab this, align it all, very good. So now we will have to see if it's working. So we're gonna do console.log and we can do a catch errors. Okay. Let's clear the console. Let's hit register. Catch errors. Okay, so we are, we are throwing the errors. So now we are separating between failure and success. So it will make our life easier. So now we want to show the errors to the user, right? So this is pretty simple. I have a snippet for that too. Here it is. Okay, so what am I doing here? So first I need to parse to parse it so we can convert it to a JavaScript object so we can be able to work with it. Then I'm creating an empty errors array because we will push the errors over here one by one. And now we are looping over the object. So first we're looping over the object, but we need to make sure that if the array is bigger than one, we want to split it too. So we're going to map over it and push it also one by one to the errors array because if we will take a look, the email array has two values, can't be blank and is invalid. So if we won't loop over it, then the error message that the user is going to see in this case, so on the first line he will see name can be blank and on the second line he will see email can be blank comma is invalid. So this is, this is not good. We want it to be email can be blank and email is invalid. So we want to separate them. So this is how we are separating it, okay? And all we have left to do is this dot set state, and we're gonna set the error state to the errors array, right? So now all we wanna do is just present the errors to the user. So let me bring in my stateless component that I forgot to delete, so you saw it at the beginning, but it doesn't matter. Okay, let's paste it here. So this is a stateless component, const, it's like a constant, and it will it will receive a props. And it's basically returning back the errors, but we're mapping over it because we turned it into a array, to a function. So we're just looping over it one by one and we're gonna present it. And the error is the error message. This letter I is gonna be the number, the key, it's like an index number. So we can separate them. So each will have its unique key because if you have like a list with no key, no unique key, then you're gonna get a warning from React. So we wanted to avoid that. And okay, so now we just need to call the errors. And we will pass it the prop, which is errors. This must match this, okay? They have to match. So this.state.errors. And we're just going to close it. Okay. Let's take a look. It should work. Register. And it, indeed, it's working. And we're, it's separating our email. Email can be blank and email is invalid. And let's just type something else. And we get again the proper error response. So uh, this is working basically. So play with it. You have the link. If you're curious, just play with the full source code and just feel free to tear my site up. And again, if, and if you have any questions, please comment below, I will help you. This is the reason why I'm doing this video is because I also struggled with these kind of stuff. Because like a month ago, I was so scared about doing this, but really, these kind of stuff, it's really not difficult. You just need to try and try and try and try. And I, and I know sometimes the documentation are not clear enough, but we have a great Facebook group, I'm gonna link to it. This is an amazing group. Every question that I ask, I'm getting a response. And even though sometimes I complain too much, but they're still responding and they're still very nice. So really I wanna say thank you to the community. Thank you to the people that are helping us and I'm here to help you too. All right, so I'm gonna see you next time. The next time we're probably gonna do the login part. All right, so have a great day. It was a pleasure teaching you.